Welcome back everybody to The Writer Reads, an extract. Today is from 365 Days of Flash Fiction. We're reading from the 29th of May, titled The Weed Dragons of the Medillo. The Medillo lay still and quiet under the moonlight. Shnari didn't believe in werewolves or the night of the full moon, but tonight, with the breeze making the wasp lilies dance, she thought she just might. The sight of something man-shaped, shaggy with matted fur and dripping wet, clawing its way out of the swamp and onto the bank, made her grip the window ledge. The moon cleared the hills to her right, sending sparkles through the wetlands below the town. But Shari ignored the silvered beauty. She only had eyes for the creature staggering upright at the swamp's edge. It turned its head, and Shari gasped. For an instant, a cloud had drifted across the moon and she thought the creature's face had lost its elongated muzzle, gaining a human face. The human face vanished and the muzzle returned when the moonlight shone freely once more. Had she really known that face? There were standing orders that anything coming out of the swamp had to be reported. The security team knew a research team was out there and had ordered that nothing be fired on without investigation. Shari had to believe them. If she was right, she had recognised the beast's features, had seen her mother looking up at her window, her eyes momentarily brown before the moon had uncovered and the creature had stared at her with eyes lit by golden fire. Shari wondered if the security team could do anything, if the creature could even be caught, shivered as she watched the creature pick its way toward the town. The way it kept looking at her window made her think it had seen her. As it drew closer, she saw it was covered with the elongated scales of a weed dragon, that its face had the slender snouted, narrow-jawed visage of the creatures that arrived on the last full moon. Shari knew. She had found the eggs. Her mother had gone into the swamp in search of the mother dragon, curious that it had never appeared. Weed dragons fed on the silver scrafy and churro crabs that live beneath the lilies. The local lagoon had been ideal and Shari had been relieved when her mother promised not to stray too far from the lagoon proper. The medillo held many dangers. Now, as the creature splashed through the streams where the cactuli lay dormant until the spring, Shari stayed where she was, but reached over and used her foot to tap the buzzer on the wall by her bed. For once she was glad her room was small. It meant she could wave at the guards to stay out of sight of the window. My mother came out of the swamp, she whispered, but she's turned into a weed dragon. It's the moon. She's human when the clouds come. For real? And Shari relaxed as she recognised the voice. Duncan would understand. He had seen some of the weirder stuff the medillo could throw. For real, Shari said. Look. They watched as her mother picked her way almost to the edge, seeing the odd transformation between dragon and woman three more times. She's looking for you. Can you save her? Duncan patted her on the shoulder. We'll try. Just stay here. She knows you've seen her. If you move, she'll know something's wrong. Shari nodded, not looking back when she felt him leave. She watched them capture the were-dragon as it reached the top of the path leading to the town and finally darkened the window and went to her desk. She was asleep when Duncan came with the news. She got bit, he said. Little dragons wanted a mama and fanged onto her when she tried to leave the nest area. The wound area was full of some kind of mutagenic virus. Shari stared at him with wide eyes. It took her a couple of minutes before she could find her voice. Can, can they fix her? They think so, but they want to keep her in isolation until all the tests come back clear. Tell them to wait until she can stand under the full moon and... Shari felt her throat clog, swallowed. When she can do that and still stay the same, she's probably okay. I told them, Duncan said. They didn't believe me until I opened the window and the moonlight caught her. They believe me now. So they'll do it? Three months, he said. Once her tests come back clear of the mutagens, she has to pass three full moons before they let her out of isolation. When can I see her? When the tests are clear. 
Six full moons rose and fell before Shari's mum came out of isolation. Shari stared at her golden eyes and the freckling of scales on her mother's face and put her arms around her. I'm glad you're back. Me too. They turned to watch Duncan as he came into the foyer. I ordered dinner, he said. Thought you might like to eat in to start with. Shari watched her mother smile and tried not to resent it when she held a hand out to Duncan, welcoming him. Shari watched as he took it and let her mum wind him in beside her. Duncan only hesitated when he stooped to kiss her. You can kiss me, you know, Shari's mother said, and that was enough. Shari rolled her eyes. Give the man an inch, she muttered, and they broke apart, laughing. You know what I saw out in the lagoon? Her mother asked as they walked back home. Oh no, Shari exclaimed. No, 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 I've only just got you back. From the other side of her mother, she heard Duncan murmur in agreement, and her mother sighed. You can't keep me here forever, she said, twining her arms around their waists. I'm a researcher. It's in my blood. And there ends today's reading. If you enjoyed it, please hit like. If you want to see more, please hit subscribe. And I'll check you later. Take care out there.